Hey, folks, welcome back to Rugby Ascendant. This is Chris in Pennsylvania. My special guest today is uh, Captain Matt Heaton from Rugby Atlanta there. And uh, I got to say, uh, well, first off, welcome back to the program, Matt. It's a pleasure to have you again. Awesome, Chris. Thanks for having me. Looks like you've got some brilliant weather there. Gorgeous, sunny weather, uh, leafy trees behind you. Uh, it, it, I can almost smell. Do I smell chlorine? Are you near a pool? Oh, yeah, by the pool. Uh, the missus just came in, so I thought I'd give her the tour. And the first thing she said is, I want to go in suntan. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll work while you relax. <laughs> Excellent. Well, today I wanted to, uh, to get you back on to offer my congratulations to once again making the, uh, the Canadian national side uh, for your summer test series. You got a couple uh, games coming up. Yeah, Coach uh, Kingsley Jones is uh, you've got picked you and you've got matches at uh, Wales and England, I think. And also you're also a, a co-captain for the national side again. Is that true? Yep. Yeah, we uh, we've been kind of in discussion about it. Um, and, you know, we're <laughs> I guess I'm at that point now where I'm one of the old guys. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, kind of just talking about, you know, leadership and things like that. And then, um, yeah, you kind of threw that in there. And I was, uh, you know, pretty proud moment, I think. Uh, he would have told me when I played in under 17 that I'd one day be listed as a co-captain for the men's national team. I, I don't think I'd believe you, but yeah, here we are 10 years later. Uh, it's a pretty awesome and seriously, congratulations. It's well-deserved. And, and, and I, uh, since you guys are playing against uh, Wales and England, especially against England, you know, because for me with rugby, it's always all but England. So definitely um, yeah. best of luck on that one. And, and I hope you guys have a good performance out there, but, but those are tough tests. I mean, it's going to be a real challenge. How do you feel about uh, about the selections and the team coming together with your chances to perform well, not necessarily win or, or but but certainly to perform well, because Major League Rugby, I suspect, has had a good impact on Canadian players, a chance to get more appearances under the belt. And they're actually competing against some of the international players that they're going to wind up playing these tests with now. Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, it I mean, to me, it comes down to one's cohesion. And if you want to be the best, you got to play against them best so Kingsley's done a good job I think of, of picking a squad that he knows like he needs to create depth in certain positions as well so he's looking at you know the big picture type of thing um, going into this so yeah I mean I've again it, it comes down to cohesion and depth we have to start putting in our systems we have to start getting a feel for you know what our, our strong suits are what our maybe our, our weaknesses are that we need to start to improve on. Um, and then from there, just kind of build on that so that we can go into those, uh, the World Cup qualifiers this summer and, and kind of be on a, a good standing of, of where we are and what we need to do to perform. And like you said, with the MLR, this is really exciting for me because I don't think as a group of players, we have ever come into an international window having played this many games in the lead up to it. It's typically we've ended a season, you know, we're six weeks off we go in and we're, you know, we're rusty, but we're not rusty. We're seasoned kind of campaigners at this point. And, and going into this, like, you know, it's, it's more just taking care of the body and, uh, and just kind of focusing, focusing on kind of the task at hand, not so much like learning, you know, we're, we're in a rhythm at the minute, so it shouldn't be too, too much of a, a kind of a, I don't want to say, I don't want to make it sound like, you know, we're going to go in and it's going to be easy and it's going to be cool. like there is going to be a learning curve. I think getting all these guys together and get everybody on the same page. But I, I do think we're probably in a much better position to do that than we have been in the past. Well, I, I would argue that uh, arguably that this is this is um, a sea change in many respects for, for just what you're talking about. I mean, it's also a big change. I spoke to Gary Gold last week uh, for USA Eagles coach. And, and I said, you know, are, are we past the days of how it used to be? Uh, when, um, okay, I heard about this Oak in Yellowknife. He's a number eight and uh, he's got some talent. So we send somebody up and check him out. He's playing club rugby up there. And I, I know about this, the scrum half over in Nova Scotia. Uh, he plays club rugby or this high school kid. Um, we're kind of moving away from those days in some respects to where you've got professional players yep. now in a league. And, and maybe hopefully we'll see some more Canadian franchises in Major League Rugby in the future. But um, you got the arrows up there now and you got Canadians. You're down here at DTH Vandemeva is playing in LA uh, and other Canadians are on this side of the, of the, of the border. Is it, um, is it really a sea change? That's how it is. You know, looking from the outside in, I'm not playing rugby with you guys, but it seems like you guys are, are it's only going to be upward from here with, with experience. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, like you said, we've got guys spread out all over playing rugby. You're in a professional environment, which was also one of the big things. Like you, you just described the old system where it was like, yeah, you know, we got this big freak uh, from somewhere, you know, we'll get him out. We'll have a look at him type of thing. Or, uh, you know, this guy's like, 
just playing club rugby here and he works part time and, you know, he plays for the national team the other when he's not working. And now it's like, no, no, no. Rugby is everybody's job. We're there like training, performing, like we are professional athletes. And now we're, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's going to work out. Like the only way to be a professional athlete is to be a professional athlete. You can't do it part time. So now everyone's doing it full time. It's going to pay off. I think it's going to be really, really kind of good, like in the long run. And then Canada has reshifted our kind of our pathway. Um, and I mean, I don't want to go too deep into it, but now with the Pacific pride program being like an under 23 professional environment where guys are learning how to be professionals. And then from there, the idea is to, to get them into MLR clubs or to get them into the arrows. Um, so there is a bit more of a defined pathway. I think they just announced that university students from Canada will also be included in the draft, which again is another way to get more Canadian players spread out throughout the league. And the more you do that, the more depth there is. If there's more depth, there's more competition. And just, again, it's, it gets better and better. So I think, yeah. And then it's perfect timing like that. This is starting now with the U S putting the bid in for the world cup. <laughs> that is huge. And I don't think, the, the rugby world, I don't think, is ready for when that actually happens. And everybody in the U.S. watches this sport and goes, this is amazing. And it just explodes. I think I, I truly believe that that, that is what's going to happen. And the U.S. and Canada are going to have a lot of really, really good talent comes through after that kind of World Cup. So I hope World Rugby, you know, accepts a bit. Take it. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? You, you're going to enter the largest sporting market in the world. Like 100% you want to get it with them now. Well, no predictions, but um, the USA is bidding on three, 27, yeah. 29, and 31, the women in 29. Um, and so here's a little sort of prediction. I think that the world rugby won't be uh, brave enough to do it in 29. They may award us the women's in 31, and, or, or excuse me, in 27, they won't be brave enough. 29, they'll give us the women's to see how it goes, and they'll see us as success, and, and maybe we'll get 31. Just saying, just throwing it out there. <laughs> But uh, the, the other piece of this, too, is I would hope that if, 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 if it's a USA, that maybe we um, also look to our friends to the north there and maybe throw Vancouver and, um, you know, Toronto or somewhere in there as maybe uh, venues to also be part of a USA Rugby World Cup. That'd be pretty cool to see Canada as part of it. But I'm just just saying that. So yeah. now you did open up a, a window here earlier and you talked about we, we talked about the test series going to play Wales and play England. But then you alluded to the qualification for the 2023 World Cup. All right. So Matt, interest of full disclosure, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm, I'm a Matt Heat supporter, but um, now, now it's when they, when the Maple Leaf has to come off because I, I can't be rooting against Eagles. And so um, uh, you, you won't get my support when it comes to that test, but that's, let's be honest here. I mean, the Wales and, and, and the, uh, and the, uh, the England games are going to be epic. That's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. But what really matters this summer is when you play the Eagles, right? Yep. hundred percent. Yeah. We, well, that's what we're building for us. You know, again, like I said, cohesion, understanding, start getting systems, see where we're at. And then we prepare for those games. Like those are the games. Um, again, it, it, I'm really excited for this this tour in July because I want to see where we're at. I'm really, you know, the Canadian players, I said it on uh, the American Rugby Show. I said the Canadian players in every team spread out through the MLR, they're playing well. So it'll be really interesting to see when we get everybody together. Not to say that the Eagles aren't playing well as well, but... It'll be really good. I think it'll be a, a really good contested classic Canada versus U.S. like traditional attritional battle for who comes out as uh, on top of that series. So, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And I think I know a lot of the, you know, speaking to a lot of the guys, you know, a lot of the Arrows guys who are based here in Atlanta as well. Like, you know, we're all really excited, like where Canadian rugby is going. Um, so, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be pretty interesting to see. Well, that's actually an interesting aspect you mentioned, because for those who don't know, Major League Rugby uh, and the Toronto Arrows took the decision to relocate the entire team from Canada because of the pandemic restrictions that are going on into Atlanta. And so you've shared your, your facilities down there with the Toronto Arrows this season. Tough season for them being basically on the road all season. Um, the rugby, uh, Marietta may be their designated home, but it's not really home. But I suppose an upside for this is there's a lot of, there's a lot of Canadians around because that side's heavily Canadian. So it's more than just a couple of Canadians, maybe playing for rugby. You got all these other Canadians in town. So are you guys uh, busy uh, making maple syrup and, um, you know, setting up curling events? <laughs> yeah, not yet. Well, it's the hockey playoffs. So uh, now they all got a root for the Canadians. <laughs> uh, Montreal Canadians beat the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. So now they got a root for my home team. 
But uh, yeah, no, my missus is here and she brought me a can of maple syrup. So maybe I'll treat the boys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Again, Matt, I, I hate to keep bringing up points of contention between you and I, but uh, again, I'm a VGK, VGK fan. So, um, uh, or VGK, I've been a Vegas Golden Knights fan since the day they announced the franchise. So um, while in a normal sequence of events, I would actually be pulling for the Canadians. Um, one of the original franchises, always been a fan of the Habs, but but not this season. I'm sorry, brother. It's it, it's it's the Vegas Golden Knights. <laughs> Yeah, it started well, but you know, what? go Habs go. I think uh, I think the support in Montreal. They've just opened up with COVID. They've opened up all the bars and restaurants and things like that. So the city will be thriving. It'll be everybody will be excited for that series. So it'll be pretty interesting to see what goes on. A couple of years ago, I was up in Vancouver, and um, the uh, the Raptors, I guess, were in the in the finals for the NBA. I don't really follow the NBA anymore. I used to. When Jordan retired, yeah. I lost interest, but. I'm up there and like there, I went to a restaurant and I'm trying to watch hockey and then there's like a 150 people in, in the restaurant and they're all watching the Raptors. I'm like, turn that off. This is Canada. This is sacrilege. <laughs> what are you doing watching basketball? I know Naismith was a Canadian who invented the game in America, but, but come on, this is Canada. Put the hockey on. I was, I was, I was kind of embarrassed for the Canadians. I mean, we all know that it should have been hockey, not basketball on the screen. <laughs> uh, we're, we're proud people. If any one of our teams is doing well, everybody supports them. No, absolutely. So we're switching gears just a little bit here, Matt, before we wrap up. Uh, rugby ATL, tough loss in New York. Uh, did you make the trip up there? Because I know that you were out. Um, but Did you go to New York for the game or, or were you back in Atlanta? No, nope, I was back in Atlanta. I had some things I had to take care of uh, at home. So, no, I didn't make it up. But, yeah, supported the boys remotely, um, as we usually do. Yeah, it was, a, it was a bit of a tough one because, uh, again, you know, I, th- I feel like we, <laughs> the same thing happened the last time we played New York. I felt like we let ourselves down, you know, a couple of soft tries that went in, you know, not traditional to us on defense, uh, a couple of held ups, which you think those would have maybe changed the momentum of the game. I think this, the strategy was fairly good. A few brush ups that we could have maybe improved a little bit on, um, but all in all, again, it was, it was down to our own execution kind of errors in that one. So tough pill to swallow, but you know, the two points to come away with that is good. And I think it, it's lit that fire under our asses again a little bit to, to kind of go into this next week with a ruthless mindset that like, you know what, that wasn't us. We need to get back to us. So, I, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to have another good week. Well, I think that's a good point. And I suppose that's that's refreshing for the team to remember is that um, even though it's a tough loss, it wasn't like you were pummeled on the field and you were dominated by an opposing side. You were playing the other top team in your conference and you were toe to toe with them and arguably were not for some mistakes um, uh, and maybe a little bit of change that the outcome would have been different. So I suppose you can take that away from that, knowing that if you play Rooney again and you get to playoffs and you wind up playing Rooney again at some point, then then um, you're pretty confident you can take them down, even though you had those two losses to them this year. Yeah, for sure. I mean, rugby's exactly it's it's a bit of a crazy game. Sometimes the bounce of a ball could decide the fate. And I don't want to say that it was, you know, luck. And, you know, Rooney's a very good side. Uh, they play a specific brand of rugby and we play a specific brand. And, you know, on the day, their specific brand was a little bit better than ours. And, you know, we'll take the, the loss on the chin. But, you know, there's no panic buttons being pushed. You know, we're, we're not tearing up the playbook and calling the season. You know, we're back to work. Everybody, like I said, we've, we've actually we we took it kind of personally and we've kind of got that fire under our asses again to again, we're we're back in. Everybody's doing the work. Everybody's working hard. Everybody's doing the review, the preview. We're, we're doing, you know, our formula for winning um, just with a little bit of extra enthusiasm. Well, Matt, uh, it's been a great season thus far. I mean, even, even in, in losses, it's, 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 it's been, it's been entertaining rugby coming from the ATL side. So uh, congratulations on that. Uh, hope to see you back on the pitch sometime soon. And um, congratulations on your selection to the national side again, and for being co-captain. It's, it's a heck of a, I know a lot of people say it's not an accomplishment, but it's a recognition. We got to say that it's got to be a recognition by the coaching staff and that, that you, you're up to muster. You, you pass scratch on this. And so, uh, like you said, 10 years ago, if someone had told you, you'd be the captain, a co-captain of the, the national side, you'd like give that guy your analysis because he's smoking something, but uh, yeah. here you are, here you are, here you are <laughs> 10 years later. And while it doesn't show on your face yet, eventually one day it will maybe perhaps like it has appeared on mine. You are the gray beard, my friend, you are the gray beard. Uh, <laughs> I got, I got the hairline for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. There you go. You got that. <laughs> Fair point. I usually don't go there because uh, I, I've got all mine. It's thick and luxurious. So, so yeah. I usually don't pick on people for that. But but seriously, congratulations. Uh, it's brilliant to see you selected. And um, I wouldn't have it any other way to, uh, to, to have the chances the Eagles beat you. 
<laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> anyway, good. that's pretty good. Well, Matt, thanks a lot, and, and good luck the rest of the season, and uh, and also with that summer test series, and then the um, Olympic or not Olympics. <laughs> I'm thinking of sevens now. The uh, the uh, the World Cup qualifiers coming up. So thanks a lot, Matt. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Cheers, folks. Uh, Matt Heaton, co-captain of the Canadian national side and captain of rugby ATL. All right. Cheers. Thanks, Matt. Have a good one, man.